Hi, my name is Pascal Grittmann, and in this video, I'm going to present the ideas behind our paper on correlation aware multiple importance sampling. Look at this shiny caustic. How can we render something like that? Well, we could use the VCM algorithm, which relies heavily on MIS. But what if our scene also contains lights close to surfaces? Well, then MIS with VCM might actually not work all that well for you. Let's check out this example here. This scene is rendered with just 32 samples per pixel with VCM and you get a rather nice result. But if you add a lampshade, then a lot of extra noise appears here on the table and on the wall. And with our heuristic, you can get rid of all of this extra noise. Before I can tell you where that noise is coming from and how we get rid of it, we need to recap some background. The goal of light transport simulation is to compute an integral over all possible paths between a camera and a light source. And we can do so by using Monte Carlo, which takes n random samples and sums their contributions divided by the sampling probability and the number of samples. Now, there are of course multiple ways of forming such Monte Carlo estimators. For example, we could also start from the light source and trace towards the camera. And MAS is a framework to combine multiple such sampling techniques into one estimator by taking all the samples from all of our techniques and weighting them by an additional weighting function w. And a provably good choice for that function is the balance heuristic, which takes a look at the number of samples and sampling densities of all of our techniques. Now the balance heuristic is only a provably good choice if our samples are independent, so uncorrelated, which in the case of VCM is not necessarily the case. So why is that a problem? First, let's talk about where that correlation is actually coming from and what type of correlation we are talking about. We are talking about correlation due to splitting, which means that we have a single camera prefix that at some point along the path is continued by multiple suffixes, those red paths here. And that is a very effective technique if most of the variance is due to the red component. Now you might wonder, what does it have to do with VCM? Well, photo mapping is in effect a splitting technique. We have a camera prefix. We do merging with multiple light path suffixes that end up nearby that camera prefix. And let's check out the estimator for such a splitting technique. It again sums over all the samples we have, which is basically summing over all the suffixes, computing the combined contribution and dividing by the combined PDF and the total number of samples, which is the number of suffixes. The variance of this estimator can be written as the sum of the prefix variance and one over the number of suffixes times the suffix variance. In contrast, the balance heuristic uses our denominator for weighting, which means that it effectively assumes that all of our variance is actually reduced by the number of samples we have. And if most of the variance is actually in our prefix, then we can get very, very poor results where the weight for our balance heuristic is far too high for that technique. So for example, if we combine this merging technique with another merge that does one more bounce along the light path, then we can see the problem by simply computing the balance heuristic weights for those two techniques. In this case, the weight for merging on the ceiling is given by the sampling density of our light suffix, which is the probability of sampling the point on the light and then going from there to the ceiling, times the probability of sampling our prefix. And of course, multiplied by the number of samples we have in total, which is in our simple example just four. We divide that by the same term again, and we add the sampling density of the other merging technique, which does one more bounce from the light and one less bounce along the prefix. Now, if you look closely at this term, you can see that actually most of this just cancels out and we end up with just this simple ratio of two PDFs. And if our scene is actually diffuse, then those two will also cancel out and we have just 0.5 no matter what the variance is and no matter what amount of correlation there might be. 
Let's check out this simple example here. We see the rendered image of our two merging techniques on the left here that are rendering just the indirect illumination component in the scene. And in the center, we have different MIS combination strategies, the classical balance heuristic in the middle, our new heuristic on the side, and the variance aware weights. On the right here, we have the actual MIS weights used to combine our two merging techniques. And as you can see, the balance heuristic just assigns 0.5 to both of those merges. Now, in this case, where the light source is actually close to the bottom of our box, that works reasonably well. But what if we move closer to the ceiling? Then you can see that there's actually quite some increase of noise in our second merge. And that's completely ignored by the balance heuristic. So the combination is starting to get worse than the alternatives. And if we move even further towards the ceiling, results are getting really bad. So in the limiting case, if you're infinitely close to the ceiling, then we have basically infinite variance in the second merge. But the balance heuristic still stubbornly insists that they're basically the same. And that unfortunately means that we have a too dark image with lots of outliers, where half of our total brightness is just focused on outliers. So what can we do about this? Let's check what previous work has proposed to do about this first. So there's the optimal MIS weights, which sounds very promising, right? But unfortunately, they also assume independent samples. So they can't solve our problem. In other previous work, it has been suggested to use a very simple workaround, which basically just takes the number of suffixes out of the picture by just replacing it by one for all of our correlated techniques. So we pretend that there's just a single sample instead of n correlated samples. In the case of VCM, however, this can be far too aggressive because we usually have millions of photons and the only reason why photon mapping is any good is because we have this many photons. So if we just set this number to one, then the weight will be far too low and we are effectively going to disable photon mapping completely. That's why in the context of VCM, there have been two other suggestions how to tackle this problem. The first one is using some additional data structures and parameters and wasn't very practical. But the second one is already a bit more practical by being based only on sampling densities. But I struggled with some numerical issues and issues on glossy surfaces. So what else is there? There are the variance aware weights which compute variance estimates of every single sampling technique and inject them in the balance heuristic. And as we've seen in the simple example before, that actually works very well in this case, at least in theory. Because in practice, computing that many variance estimates is actually very, very expensive, especially in VCM, where you have a huge amount of different merging techniques. And Additionally to that high overhead, we also require some burn-in phase to compute those variance estimates in the first place. And if we have a lot of outliers, this burn-in phase can be very, very long. So it's also not an efficient solution to the problem. Our idea is to replace those costly variance estimates by something that's based only on sampling probabilities. We again take the balance heuristic and inject additional weighting terms which we call correction factors or short C. So what are good choices for these correction factors? Well, the variance is again determined by the prefix variance and the suffix variance. And whenever the prefix variance is much higher than the suffix variance, we should reduce the weight quite a bit because there's a lot of correlation. But we don't want to compute variances. So instead, we take a look at the sampling probabilities. We assume that whenever the sampling probability is very high, variance will be low. That's an assumption that's also successfully used in MIS already in the power heuristic, the maximum heuristic and the cutoff heuristic. But the problem here is we can't just directly compare those different PDFs because they have different units. In this example, the suffix path is sampled based on a point on the light, a point on the ceiling and a point on the wall. And each sampling decision has a unit of one over square meter. 
Now the prefix only sam samples a single point on the wall. So how can we compare these? Well, we need to compute some unitless quantity based. Let's check out this simple path here. The sh blue shaded region is our prefix, the orange shaded one is our suffix. The prefix sampling density is the product of the surface area densities of every single vertex along our prefix path. Now our idea is to replace those by discrete probabilities. How do we define those discrete probabilities? Well, we take a look at the probability that some other path would be sampled in a way that every single vertex ends up close to the original vertices and close being defined as ending up within some disk D around the original point Y. So for example, if Y2 prime is within the disk of Y2. And if you assume that the PDF is almost constant in that disk, then we can coarsely approximate this based on the area of the disk, which is pi r square, multiplied by the PDF. And then we clamp the result to one to make sure it's a valid discrete probability. And we of course compute the exact same thing for the suffix density. Now our heuristic takes those two values and combines them in a way that behaves nicely to reduce the weight when the correlation is high. So what we did there is we took the prefix density and we divided it by the sum of the prefix and suffix probabilities minus their product. So the union probability of sampling either a similar prefix or a similar suffix. And why we do that exact combination is best understood by looking at the examples for limiting cases. If both the prefix and the suffix are deterministic, then we wind up with a factor of one. We don't change the balance heuristic if there's little to no variance anywhere. If, however, the prefix density is very low, then we assume that there is a lot of correlation because most of the variance is due to the prefix. And in fact, in this case, our correction factor will rapidly approach zero as our prefix density approaches zero. If the suffix has most of the variance, then the suffix probability will be very, very low. And again, we approach one, meaning we don't change the balance heuristic because it actually handles those cases as well because there is next to no correlation. So let's check out how this actually pans out if we implement it in an actual render. We use an open source render that you can grab on GitHub and all of our source code, our scripts, our test scenes are also available on GitHub. In our first application, we use the VCM algorithm I've been talking about so far. We have our merging techniques that have some correlation, a path tracer with next event, a light tracer and some inner path connections. And our goal is to reduce the weight of those merging techniques that have high correlation. And as we've seen before, if you have a case where a light is close to a surface, there can be a lot of extra noise that our heuristic gets rid of very easily. So how does this compare to different approaches proposed in previous work? Let's check out this scene here. Well, again, we have a light close to the surface, so there's some problem with the balance heuristic. But we also have glossy surfaces at different levels of roughness to make sure that the weighting scheme works no matter what the roughness levels are. And we look at these two regions in our scene. The balance heuristic again produces some nasty outliers, the yellow dots you can see here, where half of the energy is focused in those outliers. The variance aware weights get rid of most of the outliers, but they are very, very expensive here. Because we have very, very long glossy paths, we have a very large number of merging techniques, and we need to compute variance estimates for all of those techniques, and we need to constantly access all of that memory all the time during rendering. The simpler heuristic of Yendazi works really well at removing those outliers, but if we now look at the other region of the scene on this very rough glossy class, we can see that it kind of breaks in that region, unfortunately. Now our heuristic also gets rid of the outliers, 
and retains the quality of the balance heuristic on this rough glass. In our second application, we use the bidirectional path tracer with connections, light tracing and unidirectional path tracing. And we added additional shadow rays to the next event estimator. So there's splitting in the next event estimator, which means there's also some correlation in there if the prefix path has high variance. And we again rendered some scenes that contain lamp shades. And here we look at a diffuse surface illuminated through that lamp shade and a glossy reflection of another surface. The balance heuristic produces some nasty outliers on the diffuse surface we see directly, but works rather well in the mirror because the glossy reflection adds little to no variance. The approach of just setting the sample count to one is far too aggressive. It does get rid of the outliers, but it also reduces the quality in the mirror, despite the fact that there is no actual correlation in that mirror. Now the variance aware weights don't harm the mirror, but they can't get rid of all of the outliers because of the burn-in phase. Our weights, on the other hand, get rid of all of the outliers and don't harm the mirror reflection. So that's great. But what we've also seen in this bidirectional path tracer application is that you can only get so far with sampling probabilities alone. In this scene, we again have diffuse and glossy surfaces illuminated by light sources from basically all directions. And because the light is coming from basically all directions, the balance heuristic works actually quite well here. If you have a diffuse bounce, and light is coming from all directions, it doesn't add a lot of variance. Now, setting the sample count to one harms the result quite a bit, especially on the diffuse surface, but also on the glossy surface again. The variance aware weights actually managed to improve a bit on the balance heuristic here, but because of their performance overhead, they are roughly the same, if not slightly worse than the balance heuristic. Our heuristic does not quite achieve the same quality as the balance heuristic, but it is a significantly, but it is a significant improvement over the two aggressive weights proposed in previous work. Now, the problem in this scene is that we assume a low sampling probability means high variance. A diffuse bounce has a low sampling probability, but if light is coming from all directions, that diffuse interaction actually does not add any variance. So we are overestimating the amount of correlation due to the diffuse surface on the wall. And that's why we are getting a result that's slightly worse than the balance heuristic here. And that means that ultimately, you would need to do something more costly to also handle these cases, which leads me to the discussion. So we've seen that the simple heuristic works really well for VCM, but in the case of a bidirectional path racer, we saw that there are some cases where it's not quite as good as the original balance heuristic. And finding something better that does not have to pay the price for variance estimates would be a very interesting direction for future work. Also, it could be nice to apply this to volumetric rendering and maybe even to incorporate the bias of photo mapping into the MIS weights at the same time while we're at it. And of course, all of the theory so far is based on reasoning that only holds in the context of rendering. It could be interesting to see if we can maybe find something similar that's actually general and applicable to any Monte Carlo setting. So in conclusion, we've seen that the balance heuristic can break if we have correlated paths. As a practical result, VCM might not work all that well for you if you have scenes with lampshades. And the optimal solution for that problem, unfortunately, can be quite expensive. Now, our simple heuristic handles such cases very nicely without any additional overhead, and it consistently performs better than the balance heuristic in all our test scenes for VCM. And with that, I thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion.